The COVID-19 pandemic has interrupted our lives. Everyone has been impacted, but Indigenous, racialized, and immigrant and refugee communities in Manitoba and Canada have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. Let's take a moment to understand how structural barriers and systemic racism have put some communities at greater risk. People who are affected by structural barriers and systemic racism are more likely to suffer from poor health outcomes and shorter life expectancies. Housing, income and employment, access to health care and education, and other factors determine who has access to the resources needed to create and maintain health and well-being. These are known as the social determinants of health. Let's take a closer look at income, which is one of the social determinants of health. The level of our income has impacted how we have experienced the pandemic. Income has determined where we live. It determines our access to food and transportation, access to health care and personal protective equipment, and access to technology. It also determines a person's ability to isolate and stay safe from COVID-19. Income is sometimes thought of as solely the result of an individual's hard work. Some believe that those living on a low income do not work hard enough. This view assumes that every person in our society has equal access to opportunities, resources, and supportive environments. But this is untrue, as racism, social class, disability, gender, immigrant status, experiences of trauma, and other factors all influence access to income. Income inequality is racialized in Canada. 20.8% of those who identify as part of a racialized community in Canada are low-income earners, many of whom are immigrants and refugees, compared to only 12.2% of those who do not identify as racialized are low-income earners. There's also an average income gap of 33% between all Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Income has shown us which communities are more at risk of COVID-19. Neighborhoods with the lowest income have been hit hardest by the pandemic. Commonly, they have had some of the greatest percentages of COVID-19 cases, and they have had the greatest numbers and percentages of COVID-19 hospitalizations and emergency department visits. For example, in Canada, the hospitalization rate for people who live in the lowest income neighborhoods is more than double that of people that live in the highest income neighborhoods. Income is tightly connected to employment, another social determinant of health. People in low wage jobs are less likely to have access to paid sick leave. When people do not have access to paid sick leave, they have fewer choices when they get sick. They face an immediate loss of income if they do not work. Also, taking time off work when sick could result in negative feedback from their employer and impact their position within the workplace. Paid sick leave and stricter workplace enforcement of COVID-19 protections and restrictions are just a couple of ways to mitigate the virus's spread in the workplace. 58% of workers in Canada and over 70% of workers who make less than $25,000 a year do not have paid sick days. Without paid sick leave, too many workers are forced to choose between protecting public health by staying home and going to work sick to support themselves and their families. People working in jobs that feel insecure or are precarious often have fewer protections and less safety. Structural barriers and systemic racism may result in racialized staff having less power to enforce job site protections such as social distancing protocols and access to personal protection equipment. Now that you have learned more about one of the social determinants of health 
and how this puts indigenous, racialized, and immigrant and refugee communities at greater risk of COVID-19, we call on you, community members of Manitoba, to learn more about structural barriers and systemic racism in Manitoba. Many burdened by the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 feel their voices have not been heard. Together, we must ensure that Manitoba's COVID-19 response addresses the unique needs of all communities. We are all responsible to speak out and stand up against racism and discrimination.